Hello Grade 10, this is a quick video to go over what you need to do for your EEI this week to finish it off um, because we're all at very different stages and because it took us so long to get our data in I thought I'd make this so that we could all go ahead at our own pace and you don't have to stop and talk to me about it if it's on the recording. First thing you have to do is make sure you're in Google Classroom and open up some key things. The first one is the Drosophila data, the shared data sheet. You will need to be linking into that. So open that up in a new tab like that. And also go down and make sure that you have your EEI Excel spreadsheet with all of your uh, Punnett squares, your chi-square analysis. Have that open as well. I'm just going to open my copy here. Now that EEI assessment is your cover sheet. We won't worry about opening that up right now. The only other thing you need to make sure you have open is your EEI journal reading here. Um, so once you've got your journal open, I've got a copy of that here. And I'm going to go through some of the changes that I've put on everyone's EEIs to give them enough scaffolding to complete this independently. Right, so from the top, if we go down, this is in your journal, and what you should have done so far is you should have filled in the variables and stuff that we were uh, investigating, our aim, which you'll be adding into your report at the end, was to inve investigate the genetic relationships of uh, wing, eye color and wing phenotypes for Drosophila maglamaster. So you filled out the aim and we filled out in a hypothesis, we typed that up together um, that was if it's this type of genetic relationship then we'll see this ratio, if it's this type of genetic relationship then we'll see this ratio. So basically you hypothesized the different types of ratios you would see for the different genetic relationships you expected to see and then your data needs to back up one or two of those relationships. Equipment and materials, you just had to write down what was in your containers there. If you have not done that, you better get and do it quickly. All of you, I have changed this on your journals here to make it a little bit simpler. I think we had too much information here. So I've deleted what you didn't need and put in this link to our Google spreadsheet. That's our shared one that you've just opened so that you've got it there. So when you're trying to put in data, that's where you had to go. If you wanted to watch some videos to help you on that, those are there, but you should be fine with that right now. Error analysis. <clears throat> we didn't go over anything in the Biozone textbook. The basic types of error you needed to talk about if you want to improve your marks are found under this file here. But basically we're looking at um, the fact that we could have human error in that we haven't analyzed the type of the flies properly. Some of them escaped. When you're doing lots and lots of data collection, you're going to get some human error because unless a computer is analyzing it and counting it, you can be guaranteed that after a while people are going to get tired, people are going to get confused, and there is going to be some error in your data. So you're going to be discussing that. That's actually quite an important point. And it's really important that you do refer to the error and how you can improve this if you ever had to do this next time. So keep that in the back of your heads. Next, background research, you were asked to do this um, on our Google Classroom Friday. For those of you who are a bit stuck for what to research, I posted this, homework is on Connect. I've added some links to some websites for you to research if you'd like. So I've actually put that on our Connect page, those links if you'd like to. They're actually very helpful websites. You just had to have three websites, read up about Drosophila, write down the key notes that you found out about how they're used in genetic research and what type of phenotypes and genotypes they have. That's all you had to do. It's actually quite a simple aspect of your EEI. Don't go overboard. Um, so all of that research had to be cut and pasted into there. And lastly, this is what we're going to be doing this week. 
but I'm actually going to put it in on our video now so you can see it. Annotated references basically means you take those three websites that you found and you critically analyze them to, to show that you've thought about whether or not they're worthwhile, the information that they contain, whether it's useful to you, whether it comes from a reliable source or whether or not it comes from an unreliable source. And to help you, based on these links that I've put in your journal here, I've actually set up a table for you to fill in. If you need more help, refer to these links here, including this video here on annotated referencing, how to do it. So that's all in your journals. You'll notice I changed your written report a little bit. I put, I moved these links up the top here so they weren't repeated down below and I've deleted the rest. Your intro introduction is still there. You need to just talk about what you're investigating. What information do you know about uh, genetic relationships? Uh, what was your aim? Refer back to what you had up in your top journal here. So that paragraph here, what is your aim? I'll scoot up here. There's your aim. You basically put that in down here. And if you really want to improve your marks and that, you can talk about how this is applied to research as a whole, what we use um, Drosophila genetics to help us find. Some of your readings actually talked about that. Hypothesis, cut and paste that from your journal. Same with materials and method. Uh, results. I've told you here, insert the link to your Google EEI spreadsheet with your Punnett squares on it. Um, very, very simple. Highlight this. You don't have to be fancy here. Go to that EEI spreadsheet I asked you to open before. This one. Okay, you need to just go File, Share. Anyone with the link can view. Copy that link. Go Done. Go back to your journal and then go insert. So just go insert, link, paste it, command V, apply. The next thing you need to do is make sure that your data is in this sheet that's your own EEI sheet. So all we need to do is import that into here. It's important you don't do this until everyone has put in their data into that group spreadsheet. So what you do is go to the group spreadsheet, find your sheet that you is all of yours. This one's mine and make sure that the F1 and the F2 data is in there. Click on the arrow, go copy to. Type in EEI Excel. And find the one with your name on it. So I'm going to click this one because that's mine. And it's copying just that sheet into your spreadsheet. Now if I go back to my sheet here, look. There's the copy of that sheet in there with my data. So that's all you need to do to make sure that all of that group data is copied into your very own spreadsheet which is, of course, linked into your journal document. All you have to do, you don't have to worry about tables and graphs inserted here. You can even delete that if you want because it is all on that spreadsheet. The only other thing you have to do after you insert that link is put your results into Word. So in here, you actually have to talk about what your results show. Four sentences, very simple. State the range you investigated. So in this case, the range is what phenotypes did you investigate and cross? So what were your original P1 generation parents? Next sentence, what um, patterns did you see in your data? So what genetic relationships you see in the wing type and in the eye phenotype? Then back up your statement here. 
What data do you have that backs up this genetic relationship? What patterns did you see in your F1 and F2 generations? Remember that is the percentages of all the different phenotypes. What patterns did you see that backs up that genetic relationship you've just said your data shows? Then point out any anomalies or errors in your data. This is when you can also mention if you had other wing types that weren't supposed to show up. Next, discussion. Four short paragraphs. Explain why, scientifically, you are seeing that pattern in your data. In other words, explain why we have dominant, recessive, or sex-linked patterns, or incomplete, or co-dominant. Whatever relationships you said up here, explain scientifically why we are seeing these patterns. Show you understand what is happening there. This is you linking this back to theory. Um, if you cannot get that, give it a go. That's actually part of the A-level criteria. Everyone give it a go if you can. Next, just reiterate whether or not your results do fit with the current theories on um, genetic relationships. Do they back up dominant, recessive, sex-linked, incomplete or co-dominant? Um, or do they not back it up because you had results all over the place? Most of you, when you take out your anomalies, you actually do have results that back up those genetic relationships. Discuss any possible errors. Now, I also showed you before up in um, the journal section, if you want to look into types of errors, you can go through that hyperlink there, but just discuss what types of errors might have affected your results. Are these errors so bad that they make your results unreliable? Lastly, how could you improve your methods for next time? So two parts to this. What would you change and how would that improve your data? Make sure you have those two sections for each point you make here when you're talking about error. Lastly, conclusion. It's very, very simple. Restate your research question and hypothesis. Summarise your points in your discussion and talk about whether or not your hypothesis was supported by your data. Do not put any new information here. It's a summary of your results of discussion. References. These need to be cut and paste from the um, research that you did above. So as you did your research readings, you should have already done the links and the hyperlinks for that. You must use eyesight and properly reference them here to get a C. And you must do at least three.